Hi, I'm Patty with Studio R12 Stencils, and today I'm going to show you some really cool things. We are going to show you how to take sand and sawdust, and we're going to make a grungy texture background with the sawdust, and then we're going to show you how to make rust with sand. So, we're going to paint a whole project, I'm going to show you how to do all the things, and if you stick around to the end, you'll see how I pull it all together. Alright guys, let's get started. We have the most amazing stuff to show you today. This texture, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it is super, super distressed, old, junky, gunky looking, and it's amazing. And then we have made, um, we've made these rust pastes, and we've mixed them up because there's been a whole lot of like things that you can't find during um, the last year. So we've, we're gonna show you how to mix that show you this texture and I cannot wait for you to see how but the very first thing we're going to do is talk about what we're going to give away if you're joining us on the Facebook live then we are going to have drawings and giveaways if you're liking sharing and comment then um, we're going to have two sets of the dome brushes the dome stencil brushes these are magic um, those of you who are already here um, say in the chat what you love about these brushes because I think they're they make all the difference in the world and if you've ever struggled with bleeding under if you try these I Guarantee, watch the videos that we have, use these brushes, you will not fail ever again. And then we have, oh, it's up here. The other grand prize we have is our brand new Tumblr design. It's got the Studio R12 Live, and then on the other side it has all of our hashtags. And the one that I love the best came from a customer um, on one of the videos I was really working on sanding, and she said that sanding is my cardio, and that's one of the hashtags on here. So we've got stencil fan, um, sanding's my cardio, swirl versus stipple, um, stencils is a layers game. Some of the things that Lena says as well are on here, I love it, and stuff like that, blow your hippie noodle. So we've got all the fun phrases on here, so um, these are available for you to purchase, or if you like, share, and comment, you could win one of your own for free. And if you're going to be in the recast tonight, if you pop into the recast, you can like, share, and comment tonight too, and have a second chance to win. Those of you who are seeing us on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe and then ring that bell. Um, the bell will tell you when we have new content um, so that you don't miss anything. And we have some really cool content coming up that will not be on our lives. So if you're catching us on the live, get over to YouTube. We'll put a link below and um, like and share and comment. No, nope. Subscribe and ring the bell. That's the one. Okay, let's get started. Um, I am going to show you, first of all, this is the secret weapon today. This is how we're gonna get that texture. We are going to mix sawdust, um, and I don't know if you saw a few months ago, um, I started playing around with this technique. Um, Gertie, and I'm butchering it because it's not how you say it in whatever Netherlands language it is, but that's the American version, Gertie. I'm sorry about not saying it correctly. Um, she posted some pictures last year. They were Christmas um, projects using this and it was the most amazing technique um, putting sawdust in your paint and it creates this wonderful grungy te texture. So I'm gonna show you that right now. I'm gonna use a paper plate today so I have edges on things. And one thing I have done, I'm gonna show you on a square because I put my other sample away and I'll just show you how to do this on here. Okay, so we're gonna take some sawdust I did it through my blender because, and it could be just depending on what kind of woodworking you're doing, but I had a lot of texture like this that was really big and almost looked like um, confetti or something like that. And I didn't think that it would be, I thought it'd be kind of too chunky. So I saw, I blended it down, put just a little bit on my plate. I'm gonna grab some paint and I'm gonna mix it in. How easy is that, right? And if you guys saw some of the other videos where we talk about how to use, um, this is um, the dust from your fireplace. If you rub this into your project, then you can totally get an amazing like um, grungy technique. So we're using so many organic things and I think it's just kind of cool. This is a blow your hippie noodle moment, I think. 
Okay, so tell us where you're from. Um, put in the chat where you're from because it's so cool to know. Like, you know, Gertie is a stencil fan and she shared some things and I reached out to her and like, could I show this online? And she was like, sure. And she even like helped me figure it out. So, um, and I'll show you in just a second. Sometimes it's really good to watch videos because I've been working on this for about six months just trying to get my touch right so I could present a good thing. So these efforts don't just happen like super like simple, like, oh, she just took out a brush and started painting with sand, uh, sawdust. I'm gonna show you before I get started here. So my texture that I've got here is kind of pasty, but it's not thick, it's, it's gonna drip and run. So you can adjust your texture to whatever you want. So let me show you this. This is my, one of my sample boards. So playing around, this was when I had the, the sawdust way too thick, and this was when I was applying it with a um, foam brush. And then I applied it with another, with a palette, and it's like chunky. This stuff really sticks, by the way. I can rip it off, but I had to like apply some force there. So um, this, I, I was worried that it would just kind of crumble off, doesn't. Um, and so then I got over here um, and replicated a color that I saw online. And the interesting thing is the way that they're doing this over in the Netherlands um, is they're applying this orange underneath. Well, I ran across um, at, I'm gonna read it off of here so I get it right, the Graphics Ferry, which is a great place for getting um, all kinds of um, the free graphics that you can um, just use for your personal projects. Um, and Heather from Thicket Works, and if you go to her website, she does miniatures and multi mixed media. It's amazing, so check her out. The link will be below um, in our chat here in, in Facebook, but if you go to the YouTube channel and look at the video there, then you'll see that list will be easier to find. Okay, so they were putting the rust on behind and then sanding and lifting off. Um, I found that I got more of a metal look than a rust look. So when I came across the Graphics Fairy article on how to make that rust paste, um, I was all in and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you wanna stick around to the end because it's all gonna follow through here. So let's get started. So one of the things that I picked up from the folks over there in the Netherlands, I love that we're a worldwide painting like group. We can be stencil fans anywhere, right? So tell us how long you've been painting and um, what level do you think you're at? I think that's an interesting thing. Okay, so we're gonna use a duster stippler. These are amazing brushes. We've had them in our line for a really long time. They're a cheap China, I'm not knocking China, I'm just saying it's just like a cheap, cheap, chip China brush kind of thing. That's fun. All right, anyway, so they don't fall apart. They're good for scumbling. They're phenomenal for snowflakes and snowmen. If you're stippling, it leaves just this little open texture that is perfect. So we're gonna use these there. See how they're different than our dome stencil brushes. Our dome stencil brushes are firm. This is floppy. So this is gonna open up as it does its thing. You don't want your dome, you would not stencil with this. Um, this would not do good because of the floppiness. It would move things underneath um, your project. So we're gonna pick up our paint. Remember, like, share, and comment. And how many of you are excited to paint with sawdust? Okay, so we're gonna take our paint, it's globbed onto the end like that, and we are going to just stipple it on. If I need to move it around, I can push it a little bit. I want it to be even texture. It will make its own irregularity as you're doing it. So you're just gonna go ahead and put it evenly around. Okay. And that is that. And one thing that we did find is I am new to the world. Okay, one, I'm gonna stop that thought for a hot second. I've got my bucket of water over here. Um, when I was doing my experimenting um, I, months ago when it was cold and yucky, um, I put my brushes as I use them into this bucket of water. Then I took it to my sink and I made a pile of crud in the bottom of my sink and I know that that's gonna cause problems in my future if I do that too much. So I have two recommendations. Um, one is to go ahead and wipe out everything that you can on a paper towel and just get that wood pulp out of there um, so that it's just the paint. 
The other is to either have two buckets and one of them you'll just put the, the grungy brushes because we're about to have grungy with other things too here in this project. So you can put them in the grunge bucket and get them all rinsed out inside that water and then take that water outside and go water nature with it um, and just toss it on the ground somewhere. Um, these are water-based acrylic paints. Um, there's a little bit of plastic, so you might not want to you know, do it on your organic garden, but you've got areas that you can just toss that water. So, or if you have to put it in this water, then go ahead and let that water pour off the top and then get the, the gungy bottom stuff out. You can flush that down the toilet and that would be good. So there's other ways of handling it. And on that note, if you're a painter and you're going for years and years and years and you're painting, 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 paint is plastic. So you wanna be careful that you are um, taking care with your sink and how you're sending stuff down the drain. So like I can have 20 or 30 brushes in here two or three times a day and we might have three or four people painting. Um, that's a lot of plastic. Mine is an extreme case. So do be aware that if you don't want that, then to leave that to settle in the bottom of your paint bucket and then dump that out separately. Just so that you're aware, it is plastic. So I'm new to the land of heat guns and that we had great success um, using this heat gun with this project. Um, this is a nonstick black mat, black mat and um, they've got a cute name and I can't remember what it is, but that's okay, we'll put it down below in the link. Um, but this is silicon, so this is impervious-ish, I guess, to the heat gun. And the wood, I thought, I wonder if it's gonna like blow up and catch on fire, and it did not. So I will take the bullet for you. Okay, so we're gonna turn this thing on, and this is a Mondo gun, but it has a really neat feature. It actually will, um, you can stand it this way and it'll cool itself off so you don't catch other things on fire. So it has multiple levels of heat and multiple fan levels as well. So I can just heat that, it, this will come off. You can use it for all of your special mediums and it's quieter. So we had a lot of luck with this, with this but I'm not gonna take our time, I just wanted to show you. There's the cooling, and then I can just leave that over there, which is maybe unfortunate because it's going to keep cooling itself off while I'm talking. However, I will use this opportunity to show off. We're doing coffee projects today, so I want to show you, this is a coffee clock. We have the hands and works for really large clocks on our website, and um, I love this. This is like the perfect example of a clock. You can do these in any sizes. So you know when you find that perfect clock at like say, you know, Hobby Lobby, but it comes in one size. When you stencil your own, you can do any size. So it can be, you know, you can paint it on your wall because we have stencils that big and you could do a giant um, clock on your wall and they make a special hands and works that you mount like a photo on it and it, it will run a giant clock. So super fun. When you do it yourself, you have options and you can do colors like so that was a grungy, this is a, a lighter grungy, maybe more farmhouse. Um, and this is STCL 838. The clock mm. is STCL 2439. All right, and then let us know which one you like best. Okay, I think therefore I have had my coffee. Love it. STCL um, 165, 1655. And last one. That's not true, I have two more. Um, it's a wonderful life after coffee. STCL 1658. And last one. Um, I must get up, my coffee needs me. Love it. Now I'm a tea drinker, but I love coffee signs. My husband is the coffee drinker and this is him. Um, STCL 838. And then one of these, this is an example of why you make your own. Same stencil, two entirely different colors. Our stencils are reusable. They are durable. You can use them over and over again. So if you're selling in craft shows or selling on Facebook groups or any of that kind of stuff, you can use that same stencil for any color. And I will tell you, if you use red on your stencil, you might want to wash it because for whatever reason, red doesn't seem to... I'm going to unplug that. I think, I think we don't need to listen to that. Okay, sorry about that. I should have done that first. Anyway, um, you can use these over and over again, but if you have red on your stencil, then um, for whatever reason, the red doesn't stick to the stencil as well. And then you go to a white surface, 
as your white is swirling over your stencil, the, the white picks up the red and then makes your project pink. Um, I had that happen to a customer. So um, we couldn't figure out why and we figured out it was just red. Okay, so we are going to get into it. All right, remember you're liking, sharing, and commenting. And Okay, so here's our steps. We are going to, we've got our dry background. I'm going to show you how to antique the black around the edge and to put the rust on. And then I'm gonna show you how to do the drop shadow on the stencil. So much to learn. All right, and so I'm going to use a smaller duster stippler. They come in sizes. Um, they have really huge and then they have smaller. I think there's one more smaller size. The size of your brush is gonna depend on the size of your project. But I will show you, like this is a little bit big, but I'll show you how to compensate for the size. So we are going to get out a black water-based stain. I keep forgetting I'm paper plates today. Water-based stain is watery and liquidier. So um, I'm gonna get this paper towel off, or this paper plate off of here. All right, so we're gonna need a paper towel and I'm gonna wet my brush just a little bit. And when I wet my brush, I'm going to blot it. And you can see that water kind of wicking out. I want it really damp, but I don't want it wet, wet. Shake, always shake your paint. Okay, we're gonna go in here. We're gonna pick up just a little bit with our watery. And you can see how that is liquefying. And I'm gonna blot it again, because I don't want a big dump. And then I'm gonna get one of my dome brushes. And I'm going to make a shadow line. And that's uglier than all get out. But see how my brush is partially off the edge? I'm only really using half that brush. Okay, so now I'm gonna go with this dry brush and I'm going to swirl to blend that line. <clears throat> okay, and I'll swirl it and now that's pretty. Okay, and I can put out a little bit of, oops, there's my glue. Wait till you see at the end when we start doing the rust. Oh my gosh. Hippie noodles will be melting all over the place. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up just a teeny bit of the black on one side of my brush, and I'm gonna repeat in those corners just to deepen that. I want that little bit of a blackness going on. You could stipple a little bit if you don't wanna move the paint too much. Oops, get my head out of the way. Okay, and then we'll turn it, and I'll repeat all the way around. How cool is this? You can use this for regular antiquing too. Um, you could do this on a project that isn't grungy. Do you not love how strong the sawdust is um, hanging onto that? And here's a neat thing. Okay, so it's the hippie noodle. Like we're just gonna retitle this and just call it the hippie noodle event. Um, so. You can take the sawdust and you can mix it in that bullseye. Um, the, the stuff that we are using for the knots on the tall porch sign in a previous episode, and I don't see it right here. Um, anyway, it's probably at another workstation. But you can mix it with that bullseye product and um, make a wood filler out of that. And you can also mix it with your wood glue and make a wood filler out of that. So there's a lot you can do with sawdust and it's a sandable, um, a sandable wood filler and it's cheap and it's free and it's right there at your house. Like I don't I hate it when I have to go someplace to get ready to go, you know, to do my stuff. All right, so now we're gonna carry on around. Just gonna um, shade all the way around because this is little. On this big guy over here, I worked in sections um, for certain because I was afraid things would dry. All right, and we're just swirling. We're all about swirling. Find my strong side of my brush. I'll go in the corner over here at the edge on the big guy. Hang on, I'll show you as soon as I blend that out. What I wanna tell you is, I wanted to show you on a little project and then on a big project um, because not everything has to be medium sized, not everything has to be big. You can put just a, this little guy hanging in a little nook in your kitchen and it will tell that story or you can make this be you know, over your stove or something like that and make it be like the centerpiece. So. Um, this on this guy, because he's so big, I did the inside of the handle here and I did the outside as well. 
So um, you can do both. And then, um, and I'm not ready to show you the rest, so let's keep going. Okay, so now we're gonna take our dirty brush. I'm gonna get this guy into the water. And I'm gonna go over here into the stain with this brush I was blending with, and it's not wet. And I'm just gonna add some scumbly, scumbly, scumbly dirt in the background. So it's just grungy. I can reinforce my corners. Um, in painting vernacular, this is called dry brushing or dry rubbing. Um, I would call it dry rubbing because there's a, another technique called dry brushing that's different. Um, but this is a dry rub, and this is going to do a blend effect. And this is something that you can go on to. If you have the center of something, like say you have like a stencil that has um, like a coffee can on it, and you want to shade or highlight the middle of that, you can take this, dry it off really well, and maybe a little bit more. And you can start in your middle. And as it grows, you're gonna have a lovely shade or highlight effect. You can do fruit, berries, grapes, leaves. You know, so that makes a lovely faded. And if I wanted to shade the edge of something, see how long this brush goes, it goes and goes and goes. But see how nice and shaded that is? So you can get the edges of things with a super control because you don't have any paint in your brush. It's not all gonna happen at once. So you can totally um, get a nice faded effect. So I'll dip that in there. And where do we go next? Next up, we are going to mix some paste. Let's do it. Okay, I have three colors. You could mix any color, but this is supposed to be rust. So we are doing rust paste. Um, the example that they used, they based in their um, brown rust color, and then they used the orange and um, the yellow to do the rust, and then added a little bit of black and some stuff like that. I um, did not choose to do that because I wanted to absolutely do this sawdust technique. And I thought twice about whether or not I needed the, what we're about to do in a texture, but it really, really makes a difference. It looks so amazingly like rust because we add the texture. So let's mix that. So we feel a little mad scientist. Make sure you're liking, sharing, and commenting. Um, if you're just getting a kick out of using all these natural mediums, let us know in the chat. Okay, so we're gonna get some. Are you ready for our mixture? This is a joint compound. When we went to the store to get it, um, what we had, we're in small town America, so we didn't have options. We got a purple one, so this, you put this on and it's pink, um, and then when it dries, it's white. And we used it, and you can see that we didn't have any problem with it, so um, that was cool. And then we're gonna use a sand or a ground stone, and we're going to use Aileen's glue, and we're gonna use paint colors. So, the recipe. I'm going to use my cute little farmhouse um, measuring spoons. Aren't they cute? These will be in the links below. So, and it really especially, this is, more than anything else I'm thinking about this, like we go through our day and we like think of all the things that, you know, reasons to do things and all of that. The reason to go on to make sure that you have liked us and bookmarked us basically on, um, or subscribed on YouTube is because these links you can search for projects and then you can go right to the link and then you'll be able to see the list where Facebook, it all fades down below and Facebook's not really searchable. And so you want to go and just for your own bookmarking, you're gonna wanna know about this in two months or three months and you're gonna want the recipe. Okay, so we're gonna do two tablespoons of ground stone or sand. Ground stone was what was available, but it is exactly the same texture as um, sand. Okay. It says to measure these other things. Um, I don't want to mess up and have to wash things, so I'm not going to. So two tablespoons and then about a tablespoon of this. And it's obviously just um, sort of, it's not an exact recipe. We're not baking a cake. I'll get rid of that. And then um, they called for one tablespoon of the Aileen's. Um, and I thought it worked better with two tablespoons. So I'm gonna squish this. I always love the ones where, 
Like that one time I replaced the sanding disc and I had to be like superhuman to squeeze it. <laughs> I always love showing off my lack of muscles on YouTube or on video. All right. How many of you show off your lack of muscles changing the sand? Go take it to your husband and make him change it. It's actually way easier um, if you're not trying to show it on camera on the um, sanding discs. I'm talking about this guy right here. So um, you have to lift that piece of hard rubber up and if you can put it on the table and just pull, it's actually way easier. Okay, I think that's about two tablespoons. I'm just kind of making equal piles. So now we get to mix like mad scientists. Okay. So you just mix it all together. And if you kind of push, I'm using that wide palette knife. Um, I tried to use the little um, handheld uh, scrapers. That didn't work at all. The palette knives are made, um, they're actually French, super cool, so you can be an artiste. Um, but they're super flexible um, and they have that bounce and spring so you can push and mush things together easier. Believe it or not, that's actually, you want that. That's actually a good design. So I'll get that mixed up. I'm gonna show you how to mix the orange. The brown is brown and black. It's on the link in, down below. Um, the orange is a little bit more complicated. So we'll mix orange and I'll show you. See how that pink is just kind of going away? All right, so we are, they're mostly orange. So we're gonna do four of the orange, pretend like that's four. We're gonna do a dot of red just to red it up a little bit. We're going to do, I think we had, uh, where's my brown paint? I think my brown paint is sitting over there on the end of that table. I don't think it got back here. Uh, I'll use this one, it's a little bit darker, but I don't think that'll matter. Okay, so we'll use a dot of Almost had to call in a help card and a little bit of red, a little bit of maroon. Oh, no, it's yellow. I'm wrong. We already had red. We only use that really bright red um, in this one. Just gonna, woo -hoo -hoo. shaky, shaky. Always shake your paints. Um, paints will separate. The plastic is heavier, it'll settle to the bottom. Your medium that makes it float is in the top. Um, so you shake your paints to get the medium and the plastic part together. Um, the medium is what makes it harden and do all those things. So um, give it a little shake. You can also reverse your bottles um, and store them upside down sometimes and upside right the other times and keeps things moving from back and forth. So that's a nice little trick you can do. All right, so we'll mix this color and we're looking for something akin to rust. Okay, mine is way more brown. Okay, so I'm gonna scooch this all over here. Remember that technique a couple of weeks ago, four weeks ago, five weeks ago, eight weeks ago, probably every other episode that we've done this year where I talk about don't add your dark color um, to, directly into the thing, you sneak it in. This is one of those times. So let's see if I can back that out by just doing half. I'm always the one that gets caught breaking the rules, you know, just FYI. Okay, I think that that is a pretty good rust color. And so what we will do, we have these um, bottles on our website um, for you to buy, and I don't have the, it, this lid, it got moved away. But um, the lids come with um, the little foamy sealy thing inside so that they make a good seal so it's safe for holding things. Hard to find ones that are big enough. The little teeny ones are good for just an ounce of, or a quarter of an ounce. Anyway, and you'll just fill your jar and put your lid on. And this is, you can hear it crunching. Nice and crunchy, Sandy. But if you were gonna do like an under the water technique and you wanted to have like some really juicy, wonderful texture on it, this would be wonderful in teals and greens and phthalo blues and stuff like that. So. Anyway, that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna put it in here, you're gonna put your lid on. Now you can rust as much stuff as you want for the whole year just about with this. It makes a good amount. I'm gonna get rid of all this and I'm going to, once again, this is that other texture I was talking about where it's sandy and yucky. 
You don't want that going down your drain. So I'm wiping everything off on my paper towel. I'm getting rid of that. Okay. Um, this black mat, I'm gonna just chuck that too. This black mat is amazing because after I get done doing like the heating and the things and all of that, um, you can squirt it with some of the cleaner. And this is the same one we're using every week. You just squirt it and let it sit for a second and then use the foamy side of your brush to wipe it all up. Okay, now let's go ahead and make some rust. Okay, I did rust on that one already. So let's go and we'll take out each of our colors and put it on our palette. And brown. So this ended up being different than the technique that um, our stencil fan from the Netherlands, Gertie, and it, we tried listening to a, a, a YouTube thing that would say how to say it, and it was so many squishings of my face and my mouth, I thought it would be worse if I tried to say it the right way, so yeah, I, I don't even have any clue how to say it the right way. Okay, so get rid of that. Always keep your paint bottles closed because paint is plastic. And if you don't keep your paint bottles closed, then um, you are going to have dry plastic. So we're liking, sharing, and commenting. We need to win the brushes. Tell everybody in the chat what you think about these brushes. Tell them, let them know um, how great they are. We're not doing as much fine stenciling today. This is a textured technique, but they're the bomb. So let everybody know because that's like how you share with your other artist friends. Okay, we're gonna get a smaller dome and we are going to stipple on our rust. I'm gonna start with our orange and I'm just gonna to try to do it about like how I did here. So use your eyes and guesstimate. And so I'm gonna press that on to the surface and make the line irregular. I'm gonna do some other stuff to this. So, and I'm setting that on there and I'm pressing it in because you gotta make that face when you do it. Okay, and then don't let it drip down your edge. Okay, and we're gonna go over here. So, say you do this and say it stinks. Say it's just terrible and you don't like it. Excuse me. So, what do you do? If it stinks and you don't like it, I should just say if you don't like it, um, then you can take your red paint and you can stipple right back over. So say you get a band line at the top with your black, just take your base color, go right, just stipple, stipple, stipple to blend. It's like makeup. So paint is your friend and it's your best, absolute best eraser. So paint will erase. So say you finished you know, this guy right here and it wasn't the right shade of cream for your wall and say you were like, well, gosh darn it, now I like wasted this whole thing. No, no, no. You can sand to get rid of any ridges, which we don't usually paint with ridges because we swirl. Um, and then you can rebase coat and start all over. So it's never too late for your board, okay? All right, so we're going to let that sit right there. I'm gonna brush that off. I'm gonna pick up some yellow. The yellow is funny because we're just gonna touch just a little bit, and there goes the glasses. Start getting into my fine work and I finally need my glasses. Okay, so I'm just gonna touch a titchy, titchy, titch of yellow on there. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit more in a minute, but that's just gonna be to balance it out. And now I'm gonna go in my brown, and my brown, I'm gonna come down here and I'm just gonna kind of pretend like that's like a, you know how rust has got like a drama place and then it's got like this spreading place. So we wanna give this like a spreading place, like it's coming into um, into the piece and I'm also then going to that's how I'm going to soften that um, rust right there. I also need some black paint. Um, I think I'm going to use the stain. Water-based stain. Um, we use like four colors of a white and I'm going to pick up just a little bit of black and then I'm going to stipple ink. Well I'm going to wait that's wet right now. So I'll keep putting my rust on there, my spreading rust. 
And so that blends in with that orange and makes it not so orange because I'm going over the top of it. Just kind of dancing a little bit. So it's not a outside, 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 outside. It's more of a random dancey, steppy, like you're trying to put out a little fire and catch a glowing coal or something. Okay, so now I'll go back into my black and I'm just gonna darken, not everywhere, just a little bit here and there. Okay, give that. If you look at your piece and you squint, or if you turn it upside down and put it on a chair and look at it, you'll be able to get it out of your brain as it is and you'll be able to see it the way it looks to you. Does that make sense? When you are this close to it, it looks one way, but when you get some distance, like problems in life, get a little distance and things are a little bit better than they appeared. So get you some distance. You can also take a picture with your smartphone and that will also do that same trick because you can look at it in the, in the smartphone and get distance that way and you can also flip it upside down. Okay, and then I'm gonna scumble here and there. So if I wanted to pick up some red, like say, whoops, say this was spreading too far out, I don't think it is, but say it was, I'll show you how to erase with paint. Paint is your best eraser, okay? And so I can go into my red and I can just stipple right on top of that. And let me just take this one away. So I can just stipple right there. After that dried, I could go through and I could antique it back to the black trim. So easy to erase. And I'm gonna get that sand off of my brush before going in the water. Okay, so we have one done. And so we're liking, sharing, and commenting. And tell us which technique you're loving here today. It's super cool. I love that it's just weird. We've got some neat things coming up. All right, so this is super rough, and that's gonna super be kind of a pain. So I'm gonna go through and knock it back just a little bit. I literally can just roll the sanding around. It doesn't have any of those big tall points anymore. It does have some brush hair stuck to it. Okay, so that's that sanding. That's not very cardio today, right? For that one. Speaking of cardio, don't forget you can enter like, share, and comment, you can enter to win this. Or if you didn't win, you can go buy one. Mm. Peppermint tea today. Okay, we are going to add our stencil. Right here. Okay. So we are going to put that stencil down. And I kind of estimate using my fingers a little bit. I'll use my fingers as measures. This is a really irregular shape. So I think this might be, okay, we're going to use two pieces of tape. You always use two pieces of tape. If you use one piece of tape, it will show you what happens. So if you use one piece, you're going to travel, okay? That's no bueno. If you use two pieces, push it down. Now you get no travel. I can pick this up with this, okay? I will tell you this tape doesn't like to stick as well. I mean, it's sticking fine, but it doesn't like the really textured surface as much. We're gonna use this um, mushroomy tan color. Shake it up. Shake it, shake it. Okay. So tell us in the chat what you're working on right now. What's on your painting table? I got coffee on mine. Okay, so we are going to do the drop shadow. So I hope that you're ready for the drop shadow. I think the drop shadow, I was at a trade show, um, I don't know, five, six, eight years ago, and somebody had drop shadowed through a stencil and I literally almost cried because drop shadow is the thing that drives people craziest when they're using a brush because they forget to do all one side or all the other and then it's not straight and I don't know how to use my liner brush and all of that. So. If you know the liner brush, and I've showed it before, but if you know the liner brush technique, then you can do that. But if, and I wouldn't do the liner brush on this project because I think 
this needs that whole stencil to be moved, otherwise you're not gonna get an even line. That brush would travel up and down over the bumps. All right, so we're gonna use a dry brush. For you beginners that have problems with bleeding under, this is what we do. We use a dry brush, we use dry paint, we use a dry paper towel. You're gonna pick up just a little bit. I just blob that on there and it's not gonna soak up into my brush. It's just gonna live on the bottom. I'm gonna swirl over here on my paper towel like 10 times. Okay? And I don't even know when I learned how to swirl instead of stipple, but we're gonna swirl. So I'm gonna do this bottom edge and this top edge to show myself where I need to move my stencil back to. Okay, and of course I chalk my brush dry. Do that a lot. I like to talk. Don't judge me. Okay, so I'm just gonna do it on the bottom line just to save work. And over here on the top line, and that'll just show me where stuff is. Then I'm gonna peel that off and I can see where my stencil is going to go. That's where my stencil is going to land when I'm done. So now, glasses on. We go and we drop down and over. So we bring it down and over. You could go up and over or up and over. You can do whichever way you want to, but you have to do them evenly however you do it. So you drop it down and I'm looking for an even amount between my little stencil spacing here. This project looks way better with a little bit thicker um, drop shadow. And now that I've got that, I'm going to slide it over to get about the same. This one's trickier because it is all curvy everywhere. Okay, that's too big. I'm gonna go back over. This is like how you study the top of my head, right? Okay, so now we're gonna do black. Okay, so we'll get a dome brush. I want this guy. And we're not gonna use the black stain, we're gonna use black paint. Never hit the bottom of your hand when you're shaking your paint. That is how you get carpal tunnel and all kinds of nasty things happen into your hand. Ask me how I know I did it for years and then one day my hand was killing me. Okay, so we're swirling and now we're gonna swirl over here and it's just gentle pressure. If I was doing like this, do you see what would absolutely happen right here? If I was doing that on my piece, it shows you it's kicking that paint underneath your stencil. So that is too much pressure is gonna kill you just as much as too much paint. If I wad it on there and shove it down, I'm gonna make the excess go under there. So you want to control the load, control the wet and control the pressure. And that is the name of that game. Okay, so now we go ahead and we swirl on black. We do it over the whole thing because you won't know where exactly to stop or start or do any of the things. So just do it and we're probably gonna need two coats, looks like. But see how fast swirling goes. If you have any long, um, long bits, like this is a long bit, I'll, I'll do my swirl as a swipe instead um, and I'll hold it down and then I'll hold it down on the other side. Any long travels without pieces of plastic stopping you from going um, are places to hold things down. Okay, about now I've loaded it four or five times, right? I've loaded four or five times, that means it's moving. You can actually see this, it's moving, it's about a half inch into my brush. The longer you paint with a brush, the more paint that will be on the inside, which will be more available for you. But if it's more available, that means it's there. So if you're painting a really big project and you start seeing bleeding under and things like that, it's because you're not pushing hard enough over here, or it might be time to change your brush. Okay, so change to a new one, even though you're still on the same color. Just be careful, know that it's there. Knowing is half the battle, right? Okay, so we'll get all that black on there. And what I like about swirling too is by the time I get done with what I'm doing, usually speaking, I'm usually dry. So I'm, and this is a good area to hold down. This is moving a little bit on me. So I'll just hold it down and then I'll hold it down. Okay, now I'm gonna go one more swirl over the whole thing and it'll be done and we'll be moving on. Okay, 
So one more swirl. Watch how fast this goes. Watch this, guys. Okay. All right, tell us what the weather's doing where you're at. I don't even think I know what the weather's doing. I've been busy and I'm working early and yeah, all the things. Okay. And besides that, we're in Ohio, right? So you give it five minutes and it'll change. Okay, brush goes into water. Always put your brush right in the water. Um, we're gonna lift that up and you can see that um, that is how we're looking right there. And I'm going to hit the blow dryer. This is so cute. It's mostly dry when you swirl, but um, if you aren't careful, you can make a mess. So it's better to just go ahead and hit the blow dryer. Now the next coat's gonna take a few more. Now I'm gonna line this up with where my original lines were. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, and up a little bit. I think I've got it. I'm the worst liner upper ever, but I do it. It just takes me longer than everybody else. I want so the brushes, when like we have literally painted hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of projects, when they get super flat, um, they're still good to use, but they're not always, so I like a little bit more movement for my swirling. This would be great for our stippling, um, but we also can go through, and I trimmed this one. It's, it looks like I trimmed my own bangs, but um, let me use this one and show you. So you can trim these guys if you want them pointier. So I'm gonna go into that. Now it does make it a smaller brush because I trim that. So it's gonna act little, but I can go in, totally swirl, and it works just fine. You can also, when you trim them like that, let me um, grab this guy right here. He's not wet yet or not dry yet. You can also take brushes that you've butchered and you can take and make some nice stipple technique, snowflakes, all kinds of stuff. So you, you have lots of options when you are using your brushes. Don't think that they're done just because they're not exactly how you want them. Use them for something else. Like brushes kind of go through their own lifestyle as well. Okay, so if I stipple, I'm gonna get better coverage. So I'm gonna stipple on the big areas. I'm gonna swirl on the little areas because otherwise we're gonna be here for a month of Sundays. Okay, so this is a huge area right here. And stippling will also not allow things to move around as much. Swirling will definitely move things. So then that gets that basically coated. This O is pretty big too. It just covers better. Swirling is drying faster. Swirling is smoother. Um, swirling is um, less bleeding but it doesn't cover as well, so you have to do a few more coats. It's also way faster, so I think it's a balance. But just know that there are times to stipple and times to swirl. We actually have a YouTube video that goes into that in depth. Um, on the YouTube, we have a bunch of, um, um, what do they call them? Um, watch list things, video list kind of things. You can go and see where all of the Easter projects are, all of the Valentine's projects, that kind of thing, where the techniques are all the lives, so um, little chapters. Okay, so we'll get that there. And so you obviously can see that that is not done yet, so we're going to swirl next, but I am gonna hit it with the dryer. Swir um, stippling does not dry in any time soon, so, but it's heavier. So I'll dry through my stencil. All right, guys, I want to know, while you're watching me do all this, I want to know what you want to see next. Like, what kind of techniques have you seen out there? What are you concerned about? What doesn't work for you? What's, like, ask questions. And I love this group of stencil fans because they literally will share all kinds of helpful hints with each other. Um, so definitely reach out and make friends with the other people. You know, I think this is just amazing. 
Okay, so we're gonna swirl, load, do it again. And then we are almost there. So you better be liking, sharing, and commenting because we're almost at the end. I'm gonna do the reveal so you can see it. We have a little bit more work to do, but not much. And then, doo -doo -doo. okay, and get the swirl. Swirl will make it even. Okay, and this color is really good for going over the black. Okay, we're gonna swirly swirl. All right, how many of you um, in the chat, let us know how many of you paint furniture? I know a lot of you sell, a lot. You tell us if you sell too, I think that's super interesting. Um, I think that Knowing what your application is is very important. Um, I think that rust on some furniture that you do, like that's, um, that's like super distressed. I've seen um, old lockers made to look like rusty, um, like, like steampunk kind of stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this off. Ta-da! So, let me get the couple of hairs that's stuck on there off. Before you wipe the hairs off, you should hit the dryer. Because if your paint is wet in one spot, it's going to be a mess. This is so stinking cute. Oh my gosh, I love this. Super cute. Like I, li I think I like the little one better than the big one. But so in my house, this would be way better to have it big, but like, dang, that's cute. Cutie patootie. Okay, little brush. Um, I hope these are still wet. We're gonna put some rust on top. And if this dries up, it'll just kind of crumble off, so we'll see how it's gonna do. And we'll just kind of push that paste on there. It's a little bit kind of getting dry, but I'm gonna stick with it for a hot second. So I just don't want those letters to look super, um, I don't know, boring like they're too pristine. Okay, we'll go there. Anybody else need a little touch, a little makeup? Okay, we'll get there. Touch a little yellow. Like you can tell, I'm just not even thinking about this at all. So like it's kind of just a dibbly dabbly thing. Like you wouldn't wanna make it like a board and a line and a square or something like that, but it really isn't a big thinking thing. So we'll go into our brown. Let's muddy those letters up just a little bit. Just kind of dancing across the top of them. You can use this paste on anything that you would normally use any of this product on. And then these little bits that are crumbling away, I'm just gonna get rid of them at the end. A little bit of black. Okay, now, yep. This um, sand, the amount of sand that I had, or the sawdust that I had in my, um, in my basin really did kind of put the fear of God into me, and I was like, I am not doing that to my drain. So just be aware. If it scared me, you should be aware. You know, be careful. All right, so I don't know why I think I need that. I think I'm done painting. All right, so we are going to dry this, and I'm going to show you the last step. Like, share, and comment. Grand prize tumbler, um, brush sets. Remember that we're live in the chats, um, answering your questions. Um, so this is our lives are to answer your questions in real time. So any kind of questions that you have, um, ask us there. And remember that, um, what else? I think that's, let's finish this thing. Um, just remember that we're there for you. And if you, well, if you missed it, that's what I was gonna say. If you missed this today, either today at noon or tonight at nine, um, that's Eastern Standard Time. If you miss it, then go later this week and go to YouTube and you can watch it again if you want to like, you know, remember what you learned or take notes or something like that. Okay, we have 60 grit sandpaper. Um, this is one of those times when I absolutely think you absolutely need your sanding block. 
because if you're using a little piece of sandpaper, it's not gonna look as cool. So this one is a big wide piece. It's got some weight to it. This thing is heavy. Um, I'd give it five ounces. It's, it's got some heft to it. All right, so see how my letters are so pristine? I don't want them that pristine because this is distressed and aged and old and yucky. So we're just gonna take this sanding disc and we're going to let it travel. Hear that crunchy. And that is going to peel off. Look at that. See how it just peeled into all of those letters? I could go, if I didn't want this to be as nice, I could irregulify. I don't think that's a word, but we're making it one today. The letters as I need to. All right. Do you not love this? I hope you guys had the best time and I hope you join us next week where we're gonna bring you more fancy things to see and um, more fun. See you later.